Hi guys, it is Aoife from Fred Weasley Like Laughing and I'm here with my weekly wrap up. So the first book that I read this week was Troy, Lord of the Silver Bow by David Gemmell. This is a book that was on, yeah, I picked out in my TBR jar a few months ago um, and as I said last week I am slowly trying to um, read all of those before the end of the year so I can start afresh next year. So this is basically set before the Siege of Troy and it follows several different characters. It follows a young warrior called Helechion to be honest, I don't know how I'm supposed to say a lot of these names, so I'm probably saying a lot of them wrong. Um, and he is basically this amazing warrior. Um, there's loads of legends around him. Uh, a lot of people want him dead, and he basically needs to fight for his life a lot. Um, and he is related to Hector, who is Prince of Troy, their cousin. Then there's also a young uh, woman called Andromache, and she is um, she was a priestess, and now she's on her way to become betrothed to Hector. But her and Helechion end up kind of falling in love, so there's some trouble there. And then there's also a warrior called Argurius, and his people hate Helechion, and he is determined to hate him as well but then when he meets him he ends up realizing that he's actually not that bad of a guy and maybe his the way his warriors uh, approach a lot of things might be bad and you're basically following a lot of different storylines and a lot of different characters but i really really enjoyed this is obviously has a lot of fighting in it um this like the siege of troy doesn't even start by the end of it but it kind of shows a lot of build up towards it and it's kind of creating this story about other factors that went into the siege of Troy other than you know the whole Paris and Helen thing um, and a lot of like kind of just political um, unrest and uh, intrigue and stuff like that um, and I just thought it was done really 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 well and um, I enjoyed all the action scenes I enjoyed all the romance scenes uh, as I said there are a lot of action scenes which means there are a lot of some violent descriptions um, of things done to people. Uh, there are also some mentions of warriors raping women um, so if any of that is not your, you know, you don't like to read any of that, um, maybe just approach this one with caution. Now it doesn't happen a whole lot but you know there are mentions in there. Um, but I really really enjoyed this. I am definitely going on and reading the second and third book which I do have um, and I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars so really enjoyed it. After that one which was a kind of a heavier war book and um, I decided to pick up something a little bit lighter so I decided to read Always With Love by Giovanna Fletcher which I had out from the library and have since brought back um, and this took literally took, took me only like a day to read and um, it was really simple really easy this is the second book in um, Giovanna Fletcher's Billy and Me series which is about a young girl called Sophie um, or not a young girl she's a woman called Sophie and she basically ends up in a relationship with this guy called Billy but he's also this really really famous actor um, and she has to she's a very ordinary girl Girl. she doesn't really like a lot of attention she has anxiety um and she has to kind of deal with a lot of like stuff she never thought she would ever have to deal with because she is in love with Billy. So in this one um her and Billy have gone to um LA to visit his family over there um and she ends up kind of seeing another side of what it is like for him as a celebrity um, and how things are almost they're almost 10 times worse over in LA in like the land of like Hollywood and stuff than they are over in England and they've kind of been sheltered very much in the little village that they've been living in and um, so she's kind of back with the bang in with you know having to deal with all of the celebrity stuff and she doesn't know how to deal with it um, and then Billy ends up getting a part in this really good movie and he has to stay over there she has to go back to England so they're dealing with a long distance relationship um, and they start writing letters to each other and it's just kind of her dealing with the long distance between them and also um kind of figuring out how she is going to have to play this big celebrity thing again if Billy is getting back into movies and is going to get back into that circle how she will be able to deal with it um so I do enjoy these but they're not like the best books I've ever read they're just simple fun uh Sophie is a character like I think the whole storyline is always very very simple um, which makes it easy to follow and it's nice it's like you know it's nice in your brain you just have to you know they're not it's not a very complicated plot or anything Um, I think when it comes to characters I think Sophie is a lot more flawed than Billy and um, I think Billy is just a really really nice character um, and a really good boyfriend um, and Sophie kind of is the one that seems to make things a lot more difficult than he does and a lot of the stuff she does sometimes is like, or the stuff she thinks about, the stuff she says, and the stuff she feels. It can be really frustrating as a reader, but at the same time, I do think that 
if I was in that situation or if someone I knew was in that situation, they would possibly be feeling and thinking and doing the same things, even though I still would get a little bit frustrated at her. Um, but I did really enjoy this and I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. And I do hope that G writes more about Sophie and Billy because I do enjoy their world. I do enjoy them as characters and I enjoy their relationship. Um, so I would love to see more of them. The next book I finished was an audiobook and it was uh, The Copper Gauntlet by Cassandra Clare and Holly Black which is the second book in the Magisterium series um, and this is all about a young boy who ends up uh, going to mage school so this is the second book in this um, and when I read the first book um, a while ago I did say I really really enjoyed it I do love the magic system but I was kind of I wanted more of the school and I wanted more of the lessons and how the magic works and how the magic is used and again in this one none of that was there um but I will say that the adventure part in this one um was the majority of the book rather than their school life being the majority of the book the majority of the book was them going on this adventure um, and I did quite enjoy that and I did enjoy how it all wrapped up if this is a four out of five stars and I did quite enjoy it and I will definitely be reading the others the next book I got was a book um, I had from the publishers in exchange for an honest review I received an e-copy of this um, and it is The King of Average by Gary Schwartz this is a middle grade novel and it is basically about this young boy called James and he's just a really average little boy he doesn't do that well in school but like you know he gets like C, C grades and um, he's not that great in sports but like he's not picked last for the team he's picked in the middle um, and like he's just he's just really really average and then he ends up finding himself in this land of average and people are saying he can become the king but he has to go on this quest to find the last king of the average um, and find out what happened to him before he can become king of the average himself but he's allowed to have help because you know he's not supposed to be extraordinary he's not supposed to be this fantastic person he's supposed to be average so he can get all the help he needs and he ends up getting all these kind of different weird sidekicks like this talking ghost and um, who was like a mayor of average which is so weird I just thought this was really really fun um, and it was a really quick read as well and I just thought it was really really creative all the different things around average and the lands surrounding it and the different things they have to do um, and I just thought it was really really clever and really really fun and um, I think this would be a great book for a middle grade to read but I also think adults would enjoy it as well because there's just there's just a lot of imagination and a lot of creativity um, and I just thought it was written really really well and yeah I just I just thought it was really good so I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I also managed to read volume 3 of Saga by Brian K. Vaughan and um, this one as well like I really enjoyed. Um, as I said in my Friday reads I wasn't sure if I could remember what happened in the second one and slowly it came back to me. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. As I said I don't really know how to race graphic novels because I don't read a lot of them so like a four out of five stars is really kind of like a five out of five stars in graphic novel terms if you know what I mean and um, but I did enjoy this I will read the next one and the last book I read was Yellow Room by Sheila and Roger and this is um I got this in it by Dome Press in exchange for an honest review and this is about a woman called Shala who um is has this a terrible thing happened when she was younger and she has kind of taken the blame for it she thinks it's all her fault and she's lived with this for her entire life and it's kind of shaped who she is um and then her father figure dies and she ends up going on a trip to kenya and she's kind of trying to figure out herself and figure out this way of moving on with herself um, and moving on with her life and trying to get some answers to things and and while she is in Kenya um, these elections happen and all these riots happen that are quite violent um, and it seems to be like a particular type of people against another type of people um, and she's kind of caught up all of, on all of that and while she's in there as well she ends up finding out something about herself and um, that again a lot of questions about herself a lot of things that relate to her past are brought up and make her think about um, and the thing is I can't really say too much about this book because I don't want to spoil anything um, but this one actually quite surprised me and um, it kind of it's quite of a one of those quiet novels and um, nothing huge happens in it except for the the stuff that happens in Kenya but um, after a while I f realised that I was really enjoying the story um, and it's kind of just one of those books that's all about secrets and how secrets can affect a person and how it can change your perception of yourself and perception of other people and yeah it's just it's just this novel all about secrets and what secrets can do and I thought it was very very interesting. I really enjoyed the end of it and um, I really enjoyed the epilogue. The epilogue is a bit of a like you know it just kind of blows your mind a little bit um but really really enjoyed it and I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars um, and I do recommend people uh, giving it a chance and picking it up because yeah I was just really pleasantly surprised by this one 
so that is everything i've read this week please let me know what you guys think leave a comment down below and i'll see you guys again next time